Welcome to Electron Online. Here's our next example of how to implement the nodal analysis method to find the voltages and currents in a simple circuit like this. Again, we have a circuit with current sources, so the nodal analysis method is really the right method to use for this. Let's follow our steps. First, we want to find a reference node with a known voltage. Let's go ahead and connect the bottom of the circuit to ground that causes this to be at zero volts. The next step is to assign the other nodes with a voltage. We have a node here, we have a node there, so let's call that V1 for that node and V2 for that node. We don't know what V1 and V2 is, or R I should say, and that's what we're trying to find here. The next step is to assign currents to each branch. We have three branches, one, two, three, and Noticing that the current sources seem to drive current in a clockwise direction, I would assume that the current in this branch will be upward, let's call it I1, the current in this branch to the right, let's call it I2, and the current here downward, let's call it I3. So that's a good assumption. Again, if we're wrong, don't worry about it. We simply get a negative answer indicating that the current is actually in the opposite direction. The next step, step four, we need to derive some equations. We use the Kirchhoff current law at each node to derive some equations relating the currents to each other. At this node right here, we notice that a 3 amp current is entering as well as an I1 and I2 is leaving, which means that, let's label the steps, that 3 amps plus I1 must equal the current leaving that node, which is equal to I2. That's our first equation. The next equation is from the second node, we see that I2 is entering, I3 is leaving, and 12 amps are leaving. That means that all the currents entering, which, are, which is I2, equals the currents leaving, I3 plus 12 amps. Those are the two equations that we're going to use to solve this problem. The next step, we're going to define each of the currents using Ohm's law. For step five, we can define I1 as the drop in potential on this branch, that would be V1 minus zero. Now let's see here. Hmm, I'll take that back. Since the current is flowing in this direction, this should be at higher potential than this, so we're going to subtract where the current is coming from. Uh, we're going to subtract where, where the current is going to from the, the voltage where the current is coming from. So in this case, we're going to write zero minus V1 divided by the resistance of that branch two. Remember that current flows from a higher potential to a lower potential, so therefore V1 should be at a lower potential than the zero volts, so zero minus V1 is the voltage drop divided by the resistance. This is I1. For I2, we get the voltage drop, assuming that V2 is lower than V1, we write V1 minus V2 divided by the resistance of that branch, which is six, and to find I3, we take the voltage drop, that's right here, that's V2 minus zero, divided by the resistance of that branch, which is seven. We now have the three currents defined. We're now going to take those three definitions and plug them back into our two equations, which is step number six. So we get for the first equation, three plus I1. I1 is a minus V1 divided by two. And we set that equal to I2, which is equal to V1 minus V2 divided by six. Our second equation, when we plug in the correct values for I2 and I3, we get V1 minus V2 divided by six, and set that equal to I3, which is V2 divided by seven plus 12. The next step would be to set up a linear set of equations, but to do that, we want to simplify these two equations. We can do that by multiplying the left and the right side by a number to get rid of the denominators. In the case of the first equation, we can multiply this times six. In the second equation, the common denominator here would be 42, so we're going to multiply the left and the right side equation by 42. When we do that, we get the following. Let's write that up here. Step number seven, our first equation, we multiply times six, we get 18 plus, or actually minus, right, that's minus. Two goes into six three times, that's three times V1 equals, six divided by six is one, so we get V1 minus V2 for the first equation. The second equation, multiply times 42, six goes into 42 seven times, 
that's 7v1 minus 7v2 equals, 7 goes to 42 six times, 6v2 and 12 times 42, let's just get a calculator, make sure we do that correctly, 42 times 12, we get 504 and that's a positive number, plus 504. Since we want to solve that, we want to set it up in a linear format. All the v's on one side, all the constants on the other side. So moving all the v's to one side, the first equation becomes minus 4v1 plus v2 equals minus 18. The second equation, we have 7v1. Moving the 6 over here, we get minus 13v2 equals 504. Hmm, let's see here. Yeah, we'll leave it like that. So we have our two equations. Now again, there's a multitude of methods by which we can solve two equations and two unknowns. But what I'm seeing here is I'm seeing a minus 13 V2 and a plus 1 V2. I'm just tempted to go ahead and multiply the top equation by 13, add the two together, and then eliminate V2 that way. So let's do that. Let's multiply the top equation times 13 when we do that. 13 times 4, that's 26 times 2, which is 52, minus 52v1 plus 13v2 equals 18, minus 18 times 13, 18 times 13 equals, oh, let me do it again, 18 times 13 equals 234. That becomes a minus 234, and we're going to add these two equations together. So it's the first equation turn into this by multiplying it by 13. Then when I add the two together, you can see that the V2s will drop out. Minus 52V1, add 7V1, that becomes a minus 45V1. The V2s drop out, and 504 minus 234, 504 minus 234 equals 270. Dividing both sides by a minus 45, Notice then that V1 is equal to a minus 6 volts. And that's what we're suspecting. Well, we're suspecting V1 to be at a lower potential than, than the ground right here. Otherwise, we could not have current flowing in this direction. The current uh, source right here is driving the, the current in such a way that this had to be a lower potential than this. Now we need to find V2. Well, once we find V1, V2 can be easily found by taking this equation in its form and moving the minus v, uh, 4 V1 to the other side. We get V2 equals a positive 4 V1 because when we move this across, it becomes a positive minus 18. V2 is equal to 4 times V1, which is minus 6, minus 18. That's minus 24, minus 18. That would be minus 42. V2 equals minus 42 volts. And there we have the voltage at the next node. All we have to do now is to find the currents, is to simply go ahead and substitute these back in. Let's just work out one of them. I1 can be found by taking the minus, the negative of V1, negative of V1, and so, uh, dividing it by 2. V1 is at minus 6 volts, that's a plus 6 volts divided by 2, which is equal to 3 amps, which means that I1 is at 3 amps, and then you can find I2 and I3 in the exact same methodology. Well, while we're at it, why don't we go ahead and do that, because that gives us a good check to see if we did everything correctly. I2 is equal to V1 minus 6 volts minus V2, and V2 is a minus 42 volts. Dividing that by uh, 6. That's a plus 42 minus 6, that's 36 divided by 6, which is equal to 6 amps. I2 is equal to 6 amps. And finally, when we look at I3, I3 is equal to V2, which is minus 42 volts, divided by 7 which is minus 6 amps. That's interesting. I get a negative value for I3. Why is that? Hmm. Well, it looks like that the current is flowing in this direction, flowing through here, I1, I2, 
coming around here because there's a very strong current source give, pushing 12 amps to this part of the circuit which causes current to flow back up in this direction so we have a flow like this we have a flow like this we have a flow like this notice that we have 3 amps i1 is 3 amps that's a total of 6 amps i3 is a minus 6 amps it's also flowing in this direction that's a total of 12 amps flowing this direction 12 amps flowing this way and that makes a lot of sense so it looks like it is correct that's how we find the voltages and the current using the nodal analysis and again that method is specifically useful when you have current sources in the circuit